All right, Sunday quarterback here, Sean. Man, a cold Saturday, but it feels pretty balmy when you walk out of Memorial Stadium with a win. You know, again, it seems like we say this every week. It's not pretty, but the Huskers got it done. Three wins in a row and five of their last six. How did they do it Saturday? You know, Andy, uh, they found a way to put, to get, put together some drives on offense. Key, that was number one, but their defense and their special teams came up with huge plays. And their special teams started out slow. We saw the, the fumble, but the Alvano kick, the block field goal returned by Quentin Newsom, and then just the way the defense got off the field, uh, forcing Purdue of one of eight on third downs, uh, that was huge. Yeah, offensively, man, playing with a makeshift offensive line, uh, you got – freshman receivers there's times on Saturday multiple times you got Coleman Lloyd and Doss as your wideouts I mean this is pretty amazing that they're able to do what they're doing with what they have it's really the perfect combination because teams are so worried about Harvard running that it's sucking up people to the line of scrimmage and when you think run all of a sudden two receivers that run 10-4 Malachi Coleman and Jalen Lloyd are running by you in two weeks in a row now we've seen Nebraska find those freshmen for huge plays that have turned football games yeah Lloyd was wide open on Saturday all right defensively you know the black shirts uh, actually had some takeaways Tommy Hill played well and they really got it done they keeping up the pressure and that's the way you're going to get it done. They're going to be. They're going to have to carry this team down the stretch. Yeah, Hudson Card was slippery. I mean, he did a good job of moving around, but they didn't let him beat them. You know, they they didn't let those runs go very long. They were four or five yard type runs. They didn't. They only allowed one pass longer than 13 yards in the game. So, I, I think again, it's so hard. Uh, and this was another stat on the defense today that got my attention. When they scored that touchdown late because of the the, the fumble. Um, the first touchdown that they got. That was the first touchdown drive the Blackshirts had allowed in 32 drives. That's amazing. That's, that is incredible. Special teams came through. I'll tell you, Tristan Alvano, we knew he had a leg, and he proved it again on Saturday. Yeah, something about this stadium when it gets colder, because when he made those kicks against Gretna, it was the same kind of day, a colder night. And uh, But I think it says a lot about Matt Rule and the confidence that he has that, hey, you're a true freshman. I'm going to line you up with some wind behind you and let you try the second longest field goal in school history. Uh, only longer field goal was Alex Henry's uh, game winner against Colorado back in 2008. Pretty amazing. A game-changing play on that block kick. Yeah, uh, it, and, you know, they, they knew going in there was a vulnerability there with the left guard on the line, and they went at that guy. Elijah Judy, who's one of the more explosive, powerful pass rushers they have, gets in there, gets a hand on it. And, man, that thing, when it's popped up there, uh, as a guy, I mean, and, and those are automatic touchdowns because the type of people that are in there for a field goal unit usually aren't speedsters. Right, right. So if you get a defensive back catching that, they're gone. And yeah. uh, that was one of the better moments we've seen produced in this stadium in a long time. Yeah, it was really fun to watch uh, Quentin Newsom and Tommy Hill giving each other high, high fives. fives. You know, Matt Rule said, I didn't see it, and I don't know how he'll respond, but at least for uh, the moment. It, it was, was like a multiple. It, like... it was pretty cool, almost patty cake-like, you know. All right, where are we at here with this team? Yeah, five wins or one win away from bowl eligibility. I mean, everybody thought, yeah, is six wins winnable before the season? But now after the season started, eh, but now they're right in a position, right? Just think about the roller coaster of emotions we've experienced since 0-2, the Colorado loss and the Minnesota loss, to here we are. You know, it's not pretty football. Nebraska's been granted – a fortunate schedule break with the way the Big Ten West is, but the key is they're winning. They were not winning games like this. 2019, they had a schedule pretty similar. They could have won some of these games. They weren't winning them. So give Matt real credit. He's not using the injuries as, as an excuse. He's using it to build a program, to preach opportunity, and these guys are responding, and you can sense it. They love this football coach, and they're very excited about the direction it's heading here in the future. And they're still on the hunt in the Big Ten West. Who knows what Three can happen? Possible four-way tie. And it could, you know, who knows what's going to happen the last month of the season? Four games to go, two home, two away. It all starts next week at Michigan State.